You know, when you talk about human life, I think that means seeing that the immeasurable pain of the Holocaust is never dehumanized. <laughs> seeing that its meaning is never lost on this generation or any future generation, and yes, seeing that those who take our place understand never again. Hi, I'm Melissa, and welcome to this month's Live From at the Reagan Library. Remember, we do this on the first Wednesday of every month. Just a few months ago, we came to you from within these special exhibition gallery walls of Auschwitz, not long ago, not far away. And during that Live From, we shared with you that our exhibition closed on August 13th, 2023, just about a week and a half from now. Well, just yesterday, we are so proud to announce that due to popular demand, we have extended the special exhibition and Auschwitz not long ago, not far away, will now stay at the Reagan Library through January 28th, 2024. And that's so the exhibition can actually be open on Holocaust Remembrance Day on January 27th. So when we came to you from these galleries a few months ago, we shared with you a lot of the artifacts from both the victims and the perpetrators. Um, in today's Life From, we want to talk about Auschwitz more specifically as the, you know, um, horrible death camp that it was. 1.1 million people were killed at Auschwitz, of which 1 million were Jewish, making it, making Auschwitz the most lethal of all concentration camps. So I guess you can take this um, as a warning. If this is not a topic you want to learn more about or listen to, um, this might not be the life from for you, um, but we really do hope you keep watching because it's so important that we learn from the past so that it doesn't happen again. Um, so I guess that is the warning. We're going to proceed now. Um, I am standing next to a model of Auschwitz. You can see from its vastness of all the barracks just how large the camp really was. But this model doesn't even begin to tell the story. Over 80 percent of all the people who arrived at Auschwitz didn't make it past selection, weren't registered into the camps didn't make it into a barrack. So that means that all of these barracks were just for the under 20% who actually were registered in. Everyone else was sent immediately to the gas chambers and lost their lives. Again, really making Auschwitz the most lethal of all concentration camps. Now, in this exhibition, and um, we talked about it last time we were with you, there's over 700 artifacts. There are over 400 photographs. Um, and some of the things on display are actually um, uh, replicas of photo, uh, of drawings. A lot of the survivors, and there's no photographs from the Holocaust, really, from the camps themselves. So all of the drawings and the depictions came from survivors who, after being liberated, turned to um, pen on paper or, you know, ink on paper or paint on paper to really tell the story of what they witnessed and what happened to them. And behind me here is a mural, um, which is one of these uh, survivor drawings. And um, it's quite haunting, actually, because if you really look at the picture, it tells such a vivid story. Uh, the building behind me is actually a representation of a gas chamber. And you see the long line of deportees who didn't make it past selection are being sent inside. And you can tell from the shape and size of the bodies that the people in line are mainly elderly. You see them hunched over or little children and they've arrived, they're being sent into the gas chambers, and of course they're being told they're being sent to the showers. Now you also see in the mural a Red Cross truck. So what does the Red Cross mean to you? What does it mean to me? The Red Cross means help is there, shelter is there, warmth, maybe a blanket, maybe some food. Now the Nazis were really big into deception, and so this was not a real Red Cross truck. It was just a truck that the Nazis made with the Red Cross symbol to fool the people in line and it was actually these fake Red Cross trucks that carried into the camps the Zyklon B uh, chemical poison that actually killed people in the gas chambers. So they saw the truck thinking it was going to save them, that help was here. And in fact, it was the truck that was leading them to their death. 
So as I said again, you know, we're going to keep repeating myself, over 700 artifacts here. And when we did this live from a few months ago, which you can still find on our YouTube channel, um, we talked about some of those artifacts. Um, those artifacts include hundreds of personal items like eyeglasses and suitcases and shoes. Um, it includes an actual portion of an Auschwitz Monowix barracks. Um, it includes, it even includes, uh, oh, it includes a, um, uh, the original desk from the first commandant of uh, Auschwitz. And it even includes a World War II era German train car, um, which are the exact same train cars used to transport goods and people to Auschwitz. So I'm standing now in front of two authentic artifacts. Um, this is a real gas mask used uh, by SS agents uh, and real Zyklon B canisters used for the poisonous gas. Now, the way the gas chambers worked is that a um, SS um, medical officer um, wearing a gas mask just like this would stand on the roof of the gas chamber. And we're gonna show you that in a minute. And he or she would stand on the roof of the gas chamber and using a rope and pulley system would bring up a basket, would put the canister of Zyklon B inside, would lower that um, um, canister into the gas chamber, seal it back up, and within 20 to 30 minutes, everyone in that gas chamber had died. Um, sometimes up to 2,000 people in the gas chamber at one time. Now, we keep talking about the artifacts and the photographs and the drawings, um, and oftentimes people will ask me, what in this exhibition moves me the most? What, what in this exhibition haunts me, this, haunts me the most? And of course, there are so many things to point to, it's hard to answer. But for me personally, it's the survivor testimonies. And you see the survivor testimonies in the videos, but you also can read dozens upon dozens of survivor testimonies on the walls. I haven't counted them, but there are a lot and they are just so moving and so haunting. So I actually want to point out this one here. Um, this might be the one that gets me the most. I think you can see it on your screen, but just in case, once the Zyklon B was poured in, it rose from the ground upwards. And in the terrible struggle that followed, the strangest people tried to climb, sorry, the strongest people tried to climb higher. It was instinctive, a death struggle, which is why children and weaker people and the aged always wound up at the bottom. The strongest were on top, because in the death struggle, a father didn't realize his son lay beneath him. And I just think that is such a haunting and moving quote. So the next artifact we're gonna show you is just here over my left shoulder. Um, this is a very sad and moving artifact. This is an actual child's shoe with a sock tucked inside of it. Now, of course, we don't know the real story of the shoe and sock um, because its owner is no longer alive. Um, but there are some assumptions that can be made from this child's shoe and sh sock. Most likely, this child arrived off the trains at Auschwitz, and because of his age, young age, didn't survive the selection process and was sent directly to the gas chambers. Now, whether he walked to the gas chamber or he was carried by his mother or a family member, um, and got to the gas chamber and was told they were taking showers. So perhaps that mother took off the child's shoe and sock and tucked the sock inside the shoe, um, thinking it'd be easier to retrieve after the showers. Of course, at Auschwitz, tens of thousands of shoes were found in the rubble after liberation, but this is one of the few where an actual sock was found inside. This shoe and sock is really the only living testament that this little boy lived at some point, was on this earth at some point. Um, so such a moving uh, piece of history here. So now we're gonna talk about how the gas chambers actually worked. Now, um, other than the drawings which we talked about, which are of course replicas because they're reprints, every artifact, all 700, 700 artifacts are authentic. Everything you see on display are real artifacts, direct witnesses of the horrors of Auschwitz and the Holocaust. There are only three items on display that are actual replicas of artifacts. And I'm gonna show you two of them now. And that's because after the liberation of the camps, when that was happening, the Nazis destroyed a lot of what was at the camp and the gas chambers didn't survive. So this is a replica. This is to show you 
what the deportees arriving at the gas chambers actually saw. They were told they were taking a shower. Now, I've been speaking, I've had the honor and privilege to speak to a lot of survivors um, once this exhibition's opened. And so far, every survivor I've spoken to told me that they knew when they got to Auschwitz that the showers were actually gas chambers. Um, so what a horrifying way to know you're walking into your death. But what they saw when they got there was a steel door, a steel door with a handle, you know, with a lock, with a peephole. And so this is what they saw when they approached the gas chamber or what they were told was a shower. But once they came inside, we're gonna move to the other side right now, you see a completely different story. You see that once they're inside, they are completely trapped. There was no, no door handle, no lock, no way to open this door. Now, as we said earlier, it took about 20 to 30 minutes for everyone inside the gas chamber to die. So from the other side, there was a peephole, and that was so the guards could look inside to make sure everyone was dead. Well, in the very beginning of the use of the gas chambers, what was happening is those that were inside realized they were dying, were grasp, gasping for air, and were trying to poke their hands and poke a hole through the peephole to let fresh air in. So as time went by, the SS guards built steel cages over the peephole so that when the people were inside, there was no way to get at the peephole to get fresh air. Just a horrifying existence. Just to my right is the second replica, again, to showcase how the gas chambers worked. So I don't know what you can see on camera. It might not come across that clearly, but basically at the roof um, of the gas chamber is where that SS medical orderly with the gas mask would be standing. He or she would be near that sort of chimney looking thing at the top using a rope and pulley system. Again, not knowing if you can see it or not, but inside this steel cage is another steel cage. And at the very bottom of the steel cage is a basket. Again, not know, don't know if you can see it or not. Using a rope and pulley system, the medical orderly would pull the basket to the rooftop, would put the canister filled with Zyklon B into that canister and would lower it into the basket into the bottom, again, trapping everyone upwards of 2,000 people inside where they all perished. Again, the steel cage is inside the steel cage so that those who were inside the gas chamber couldn't actually use their hands to get at the cage on the inside to try and stop the gas from coming out of the canister. So I know this was a very hard topic. Um, I know it's not something maybe you wanna hear at the beginning of your Wednesday morning, but I really wanna thank you for sticking with us if you were able to do so, because it's so important to learn about the Holocaust. It's so important to hear about the horrors of what happened and really what happens if you turn a blind eye to hate. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why we decided to extend the exhibition, to allow more people to come out to learn about this time in our world's history. Now, I kind of want to say, you think January 28th, okay, the exhibition's there for another five months, I've got time to come see it. I want to tell you, you really don't. Um, we really encourage you to get your tickets now. We've been open five months. We have been sold out every single Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the entire run of this, um, of this exhibition so far. So if you think you want to come between now and January 28th, please get your tickets in advance. We'd hate for you to drive on out here and to be, for us to be sold out. You simply go to reaganlibrary.com slash Auschwitz. That's reaganlibrary.com slash Auschwitz. Um, if that's too hard to remember, just go to reaganlibrary.com and, and click on the get tickets button. Um, and if you can come Monday through Thursday, that's when we are less crowded. That's when you'll have more time to sort of experience and take in the exhibition on your own time. So I highly encourage that as well. Um, again, just want to thank you for joining us. Um, this exhibition means a lot for us to have here. The more people that can be educated about this time in our world history, the better. We do hope you are able to come out. Again, that's reaganlibrary.com slash Auschwitz for more information and for tickets. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. The most comprehensive exhibition ever presented on Auschwitz. The stories here are so powerful. So moving, so emotional. It's real. An unforgettable event to shake the conscience of the world. Come and experience this, it's very important. It's a once in a lifetime experience. It is absolutely magnificent. Everybody should see it. Auschwitz, not long ago, not far away. Extended by popular demand. Secure your advance tickets today.